so um, United ended up losing 1-0 at home to Arsenal, which is typical of us, right? We end up thumping our rebel Leipzig in the Champions League and then we somehow managed to lose against a pretty crap Arsenal team at home um, in a very sloppy uh, way. We gave away a penalty, which is kind of ironic considering the amount of penalties we won last season that eventually got us uh, to finish third, you know, by the skin of our teeth. But um, the performance probably... Less to say about it, the better. Well, Bamiang scored in what the 69th minute from a penalty kick. Um, there wasn't really much in the game, it was incredibly tight from the beginning to the end. Both managers or both teams, you know, really, um, kind of illustrating how far they've fallen off from the perch that they were on prior. prior. Um, in Arteta's case, he's having to work with a lot of players he hasn't necessarily bought or he hasn't necessarily. You know, yeah, he hasn't necessarily built the team in his image just yet. He's still implementing his tactics. But so far from that one game, we definitely have seen a vision of what Arteta is trying to do with um, Arsenal and how he's trying to, you know, um, bring the best out of the tools that he has available. Of course, we will know what's happened with Ozil. But so far, he's really worked out a great way to combine Lacazette and Aubameyang in the same team. I'm still not very much sold on Lacazette. I still think he's probably not of the level that Arsenal probably need ultimately if they want to go to the top. I think he sorted out the midfield partnerships and the combinations, especially with El Nene, who was quite possibly the best midfield on the pitch, which is a real um, kick in the face, especially if you're Paul Pogba, especially if you're Bruno Fernandes. Having El Nene essentially run that game from the minute one to the last minute, especially if you've seen that video going around on social media of him pressing defenders, you know, until the very last minutes of extra added, added extra time, of, you know, after the 90, pressing Luke Shaw into passing the ball back to the goalkeeper which you know he's always happy to do but you can see what Arteta's doing there and I guess anyway let's start from the beginning I think the lineup wise for United I don't think anyone had any complaints right let's look at we'll look at this game in isolation and then of course we'll kind of it, I'll kind of talk about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's tenure as United manager in general but in terms of lineup I don't think any United fan had any real complaints the back five picks itself. Of course, I would have loved Tellers to have played against Arsenal, but unfortunately he contracted coronavirus, which is, again, typical of our luck. So um, we had a midfield diamond of Fred, Mc Scott McTominay, Paul Pob and Bruno Fernandes. And then we had a Mason Greenwood and a Marcus Rashford playing up front. Now, the the formation obviously works. We saw it work pretty well against Red Bull Leipzig in the Champions League. Um, we have this understanding that we have probably midfielders that aren't necessarily specialists in any sort of role, but they're sort of, you know, they can kind of occupy different positions. You know, for the most part, I would assume most would agree. Scott McTominay, Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba can probably rotate and ranks each other in terms of who plays where in that midfield three. Maybe Fred is the only sort of like out and out defensive midfielder, maybe apart from Scott McTominay, I still don't think it's at his best position. But let's say those three midfielders can work. That's completely fine. Um, but unfortunately, again, with Solskjaer and this team in general and the kind of the profiles of the players, it seems like these sort of players need a lot more coaching a lot more direction than maybe other players will do now as, as some managers will probably argue that most players need directions and an idea of what the manager is trying to do in, in order to implement it on a pitch but there is a distinct lack of personalities willing to step up and change things on their own on the field and sort of force a manager into making a tactical change um, you know, in kind of years gone by where managers and players will sort of like push themselves up. They take a different man on in the, in the box in terms of covering. Just do these little tweaks because they see things differently when they're playing on the pitch. That necessarily happened. So in the first 10, 15 minutes, it was quite clear that this formation with a diamond in the middle wasn't working, right? It wasn't working primarily because we have a imbalanced team in that if you're going to play this sort of diamond, you're going to need your fullbacks to provide the width. And if you're, they're not providing the width, you're going to need your players on you know, that are playing, you know, on either side of that diamond to then push out onto the wings and block any sort of attacks coming from the right back and the full backs of the opposing side. 
And unfortunately for us, we had two players, especially in Paul Pogba's case, who were incapable and unwilling to cover their fullback and cover that position. So we were getting overloaded in the flanks. More so I say on, on Luke Shaw's end of things, because I think Arsenal identified that Luke Shaw was definitely the weak link in terms of our back line. But we were getting absolutely overrun in that on the flanks. Overrun, overrun, overrun. No cover being made. And again, you would prefer it if the players themselves would have made the decision to switch the midfield into a flat back four, into a flat four into a flat floor four sorry or to maybe get a couple of the players pushing further up in order to kind of push the Arsenal fullbacks a bit further back that didn't happen we ended up making Hector Bellerin you know look like prime bloody Roberto Carlos and we made El Neni look like flipping Sergio Busquets reincarnated typical of United um, formation so that didn't obviously work and then through that, a bit of a stalemate in terms of making sure we got the breakthrough. Um, De Gea pulled off a couple smart saves. We had a couple of finished shots on goal. Most notably, maybe you might make some Greenwood chance. That wasn't really much of a chance. And the game was sort of petering out to a boring nil-nil conclusion until Paul Pogba, one of the midfielders who was tasked to occupying that left-hand side of the pitch, failed to pick up his man. Hector Bellerin wandered into the box, into a very innocuous position. You know, you don't really think Hector Bellerin's going to really cause any damage in the box. He doesn't have the dribbling, dribbling ability or the, or the you know final ball ability to really, really split our defenders. Paul Pogba decides to go harsh, rush, he rushes in and clips him in the back of the foot. Bit of a soft uh, penalty, don't get me wrong, but I'm a big believer in all fouls in the box should be penalties. I don't believe in the fact that, you know, certain fouls in the box equal penalties and certain don't. Uh, it gets annoying when some referees are, you know, they sort of adjudicate that, oh, because this guy didn't fall as hard as he should have outside the box, it's not a penalty. I don't, I'm not a believer in that. So it was soft, don't get me wrong. But I still think it was a penalty. I think if that happened against United, our fans would be absolutely spitting feathers. Of course, Mike Dean was a bit inconsistent with his cards. But again, I don't like talking about referees. You can't control referees. They are sort of like, you know, the they're sort of like the last thing a team should be worrying about that's properly coached. In the end, we gave away the penalty. And um, Aubameyang then goes and, you know, convincingly slots it away. The game is pretty pointless and useless having Jaren to stop penalties. He's not the best, but in terms of shot stopping, obviously he's up there. And then from then on, you didn't really see us getting any, you know, think, think from the game. We made some really bizarre substitutions towards uh, the end of the game. I think, who did he take off? Did he take off? Um, he brought Edson Cavani, Manny Matic and Donny van der Beek for Greenwood, Fred and Maguire. No, Greenwood, Fred and Bruno Fernandes, respectively. And again, the game just petered out to an absolute standstill. Um, Arsenal were able to sneak the win. Probably fairly deserved to be able to balance a play. You'd say they were probably... Even though the game was dead, I'd say Arsenal probably had the better part of the possession. They looked a lot more frightening, a lot more uh, purposeful when they did have the ball in our final third. Their passing was a bit more crisper. They had some combinations and some systems and some patterns that they were looking to kind of exploit. Saka obviously um, had a good little duel with one Saka on the right-hand side. I forgot who's, oh, sorry, left-hand side. I forgot who's playing on their right. Uh, sorry, it's here, isn't it? Hector Bellerin and William. William was pretty ineffective. He didn't really help any situation there. Bellerin did his job pretty well in terms of pinning up, pinning back our fullbacks, and of course, inevitably won the penalty. Um, and of course, you know Thomas Partey was you know doing what he did best in the midfield, but I still think El Nani was the best player. So going back again to Man United, I would say the issue at hand here isn't that this result is in isolation this is probably more of a representation of this current team's pers you know the personalities in this current team and of course the a level of ability to coach of this current manager there was a lot of excuses made about Solskjaer's tenure at United especially in the earlier parts when our results are a bit inconsistent that he didn't have the players that he wanted that the players that he didn't want uh, at the club or still at the club stinking it up he's been able to sell or let go of a few players if you believe what you read some of the players wanting to leave regardless Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez being two of the biggest ones to point out but let's re let's believe the the kind of um the line coming up from the club that he got rid of those players he then got some players in now they weren't all the players that he wanted if you again believe the reports in the papers he missed out on a few players on his list Sancho and Jack Grealish being one of two of the big standouts but so far, he has got the majority of the players that he wanted. He has got a team full of personalities and players that he feels like are playing for him. He's made constant excuses about the boards, um, in, a, in our eyes, inability to sign players, but he thinks he's done a great job. 
And he's got the coaching staff that he's worked with, you know, that have got the best results at United during the time that he's been there. So these sort of results, there really is no excuse, especially when you look at the flow of the game. In the first 15 minutes, this formation wasn't working. Sosha couldn't change it. He couldn't affect the game in any way, in any sort of meaningful way. And then once the game was away from us, the changes came too late. And when the changes did come, there weren't the changes that you really wanted to see. And there are really loads of like, simple mistakes that don't really make that much sense if you think about it right like just in terms of what we're trying to do as a club going forward the personnel and the profile of the players this type of football that we want to play there's so much too much of a mismatch and ultimately I think what needs to happen is that obviously we need to replace Solskjaer as manager I don't think any United fan would look at himself in the mirror and honestly say that they think Solskjaer is going to be the manager to take us back to winning a Premier League title um, would, whether he could win us a trophy, of course, that's possible. Um, knockout tournaments, you know, um, our knockout tournaments, you can scuff your way towards a final. And if you get into a final, all bets are off in terms of who's the favorite and who's not, who doesn't have the best coach, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a final, anyone can win it. But in terms of sustaining um, a league campaign to challenge the, the, the league winners or to basically you know, go for the title ourselves, we're not doing it under Solskjaer because he requires too much. Um, he requires too many resources to make that work. And unfortunately, under the current ownership, under the Glazers, under the stewardship of Ed Woodward, those resources are never going to become available. We had the same cycle with managers. I think someone made a graph about it on social media where we hire a manager, the manager finishes in fourth position. No, manager finishes outside the top four. You give them money to finish in the top four. They finish in the top four. Then in order to build upon that, the team then decides to withhold the funds because they feel like they've got the, you know, they've got the Champions League funds or the Champions League uh, finishing uh, money already in the bank. And they basically uh, tie the hands back behind the manager's back and prevent him from building. And then we're in a cycle where they lose a couple of games and we sack them and hire another manager. That obviously does happen, but I don't think that is special. I don't think that is something that's only affecting our club. I think most big clubs in Europe who are trying to win big trophies are in the same sort of cycle that we're in, regardless if they have a really good football instructor or not. Unfortunately, it's even worse if they have a good football instructor and they have an actual vision in place, then there are no excuses, right? You look at Kovacic at Bayern Munich. He did a pretty good job. I think it was at Frankfurt prior and to joining Bayern Munich. He was given the reins at the club. He stunk up the place and didn't necessarily work out, even though stink up the place in Bayern Munich is like finishing, what, third or something, unacceptable like that. And then he gets fired pretty swiftly, right? And they bring someone else in. And this is a team, this is a club that has... That is probably, you know, some could argue maybe one of the best well best well run clubs in the world. You could probably put any manager in charge of that team and they'd probably finish in the top two of the Bundesliga or maybe they'd you know, they'd make sure they'd come um they progress out of the group stage of the Champions League. Fair enough. But if that occurs at Bayern Munich, why are we somehow exempt from that? Why are some of our Sam fan base so hell bent on protecting Oli, defending him at all costs when quite clearly he's demonstrated over a prolonged period in time that he's not the manager to get us to the next level. He was a perfect guy to come in after Mourinho. The best solution. Mourinho was toxic. Um, Mourinho kind of had the players arguing amongst each other. He created divisions inside the team. The backroom staff weren't happy. The person at the front desk wasn't happy. The mood was quiet, incredibly dour. That's what Mourinho did, right? And of course, maybe it was the wrong time for him at the time. Maybe he was going through some some stuff personally. Whatever the reason, Mourinho completely ruined the atmosphere at Man United. So hiring someone like Owen Gunn Solskjaer made a lot of sense on an interim label, on an interim basis. But judging by what he's done so far, especially when since he's under contract, it's not really been the funnest of rides. We're now, what, 15th in the league, right? 15th in the league, 15th in the league, in the Premier League. And um, of course, we have this mythical one game in hand, which is against us, the Villa, and doesn't really matter considering how well they've been playing and how poorly we've been playing. Jack Grealish signed a new contract. You know he's aware of the interest that we've had in him. You, it's just all lined up for him to have an absolutely worldly of a performance anyway. So those things are not happening at the moment. And there's no other thing that we can do. We can't get rid of all the players. So the only person that has to go is Solskjaer, unfortunately. That is the nature of the beast. And I just don't understand why it's such a controversial opinion. 
that some players or some, sorry, some supporters would want a proper football coaching who can improve the players that we have and maybe operate on a bit of a shoestring budget because that's, that's that's essentially what he's going to have to deal with under this current regime and under the stewardship of Ed Woodward. You're not going to get the money you want. You're not going to get the players you want and you're going to have to work with whatever you're given. And if that's the case, um, Mauricio Pochettino's type of manager might be the best option for us now, especially, especially with the Glazers. Because if you're saying Solskjaer needs Sancho, Solskjaer needs him, Solskjaer needs that person, that's never going to happen under the, the Glazers. If we do go and sign Sol- um, Sancho in January or in the next transfer window in the summer, that will end up being our only signing anyway. We're not going to go and sign three players after spending $120 million on a player we should have bought last season. That's not going to happen. So if that's the case, and we know that's not going to happen, we definitely need to get a football coach in who can coach these players because I refuse to believe these players are 15th um, in the Premier League level. They're not. We've seen what they can do against Robert Leipzig. We've seen what they can do against PSG. We've seen the level of performance that can be coached out into this side. We just need a coach that can do it on a sustained period with the players and get the combinations right because maybe the Pogba situation does require him to leave. Maybe his time has run out at United, which I'm definitely agreeing with. I don't think he's necessarily pulled up any trees at United apart from that one sort of like purple patch he had, right? Maybe that's true. But what we need is a manager to come in and provide some alternative options to the way we line up. You know, not always just completely trusting and starting with the same back five in all different games the same shape in all games for the most part we kind of deviate between two or three formations we have the same individuals playing in the same positions we have the same combinations in midfield right and i get it man just have their sort of like they're going to go back to the things that work in prior in you know in sort of like the in the better times but considering how you know inconsistent we've been considering the fact that some of the players don't seem to be gelling as well as they should do on paper Let's find some more interesting solutions. I don't mind if Dwan Mata decides, you know, has to play on a right midfield of a 4 3 3 because he's the one to hold position the best. I don't really mind it. I just want there to be a direction and a clear idea about what we're doing. What I don't want is for a manager to come in like a Soul Shark, try and play all these best players at once, it not work, and then not make the necessary changes in order to kind of affect the game because he's already spunked his load on the lineup that's already starting. So yeah, and if ever there was a side you don't want to lose to, it's Arsenal. Their fan bases are, their fan base is, it's just, you know, it's hard to actually tolerate how annoying their fan base are. They're just so, so, so frustrating to even talk to. So again, big up United for ruining my weekend as per usual. Um, Now we're going to what, who we're facing? We're facing um Istanbul in the Champions League. We're, we're, we're most likely going to beat them 6-0 and then lose the following match in the Premier League as per usual. Nothing real will change after that until the manager's gone. Um, and if anybody's sat there thinking everything will change once Pogba leaves, I um, <laughs> I will, you know, I'm confidently can say if Pogba leaves, he will definitely win a league trophy before we do. That goes without a shadow of a doubt. Yet you can say, oh, because you'll be, you know, part of the flipping squad at Juventus. No, whatever. Whatever side he goes to, he'll win the league title before we do. Guaranteed. Especially if we keep Solskjaer. That's not going to change. But yeah, United lost 1-0 at home to Arsenal. Terrible loss. But again, probably well-deserved considering how poorly we're coached and how terrible our players are, really. You know, players don't really have any excuses there too. They all flipping stunk up the place. Of course, Pogba's going to get all the big headlines because he gave away the penalty, but no player on that pitch can hold their head high. Everyone was shocking from the back to the front, really. Maybe De Gea can maybe say he played, uh, you know, somewhat well, but everyone else, shocking a display from everyone there, especially considering the level of opponent we're facing. But hey-ho, what can we do?